In this chapter, we will be studying trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to look at problems that involve multiple triangles. All right, hi everybody. So in this lesson in trigonometry, we're going to take a look at problems that have multiple triangles. Um, now, something you should know before we get into this is that in this particular course, um, there's, there's really not going to be much variation with this. Uh, there's really going to be just kind of two types that we look at specifically. Now, as soon as you throw a context on them, things tend to always look a little bit different, but we're going to want you to kind of break them down into, into two situations that look some, sort of similar to this here. And we'll talk about an example or two of, of solving these sorts of things. Now, first of all, remember that to solve a, a triangle, you need three bits of information. Now, one of those bits of information is going to be knowing that it's a right angle triangle. Okay, so that's, that's nice. That's convenient. And then we need two other bits of information in order to find any part that we want. Now, typically what's going to happen here is, for example, you're going to have two adjacent triangles here. They're going to share a common side. So what I'll do here is I'm going to give you a couple bits of information about this triangle. So you'll know it's a right angle triangle. Then I'll give you a couple other bits, which will enable you to get this common side, this shared side. And that will be the additional bit of information you need to find the missing piece that's on this triangle over here, on this side of the, the diagram. Okay? So that's one way these questions get, get uh, worked through here. Another way is to have the two triangles sort of overlapping like this. So I've got, well, really what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at three triangles. I've got this big one right here, and then I've got this little one here, and I've got this other one right here. Now, we're, our focus here is going to be primarily on right angle triangles, so I'm not even going to worry about this triangle right here for right now. Okay, That's not going to help me out here at all. What I want to do is work with this little right angle triangle right here and this big right angle triangle. Now, notice that the side that's shared by both of those is this one right here. So that is, that is typically how this is going to work. I'm going to give you a couple bits of information. Maybe I give you the length of this side or the hypotenuse here or the angle, or maybe I give you the whole length of this side, maybe the angle here. And then what you got to do is you're going to have to find this side here, this common side, and then use that to find uh, a missing bit of information in another triangle. Now, usually when we draw it out like this, there's another step in there. Uh, like you're going to have to subtract two sides. Maybe maybe what I want to know is I want to know what this distance is right here. So I find the, the entire length from there all the way to there. I find the length from here to here. And then I subtract them to get what this is. Okay. So oftentimes there's another little bit of information here. So what we do is we find the length of the common side because that's often the key to solving the problem to being able to move on to the bit that you don't know. And note, we can assume that buildings and trees are vertical, that is perpendicular to the ground, okay? And that the ground is horizontal and the two are perpendicular to each other. So that's what I was just saying there. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is I just want to take a look at a couple of examples to get you started here. And then, then you'll have uh, the rest of the lesson there will be um, for you guys to do the, the re review material. Okay, so here's our first example here, and you can see that this is an example of that first shape I was referring to. And we want to find the unknown side. Okay, well, we've got these two triangles here that are back to back. And if this is perpendicular right here, I know that this is going to be perpendicular right there. Okay, they're going to be 90 degrees on both sides. Now, I have two bits of information here. I know that this side right here is 22, and I know that this angle here is going to be 42. Okay. Here, I want to know what this side is, but the only bit of information you have about this triangle here is that that's 34 degrees. I need one more bit of information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that shared side, that common side there. Now, let's take a quick look at this. Uh, and remember how, how trigonometry works. The very first thing I'm going to do here is I identify that angle, that reference angle here. Now, that lets me label things. I've given you the side opposite that angle, and I'm asking you for the side adjacent to it. So then I think here, okay, what trig function, what trig function combines the opposite side and the adjacent side? And the answer is the tangent. So the tangent of 42 degrees is going to equal 22 over, and let's call it, uh, well, I don't want to use x because I got x down here. So let's call it y. Okay, 
So now, notice that my unknown is in the denominator. So remember what we did here. We were able to swap those two and get that y is equal to 22 over the tangent of 42 degrees. So I pull out my calculator. Whoops. And it's going to be 22 divided by the tangent of 42. And I get 24.4. I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth, but I'm going to leave that in my calculator because I want to use the whole decimal there. So 24, this is approximately, put a little dot there for approximately 24.4. Okay. Now, I have that bit of information. Great. So now I look at this triangle. And I don't worry about the other triangle here. So again, I have to focus on the angle. So here's my reference angle. That makes the side that I just calculated the opposite side. And I'm looking for the adjacent side. So then I got to ask, well, what trig function combines the opposite side and the adjacent side? And once again, it's, it's tangent. So in this case, I've got the tangent of 34 degrees. And that is going to equal the y, which I know is 24.4, over my x. And so just like happened down here, I'm going to swap those two. So x is going to equal 24.4 over the tangent of 34 degrees. Now, I'm going to pull over the calculator here. Now, what I'm going to do is I've already got that answer in there right now. So I'm going to press divided by and then tangent of 34. OK? When I press Enter, there we go, 36.2. So this is going to be approximately equal to 36.2. Whoops, you can't see that. Okay, and so there you go. Okay, now this question right here is an example of that second scenario that we were looking at. And I want to find the side x here. Okay, now I've, remember I've got these two triangles here. There's two right angle triangles. I've got the small one and I've got the large one here. And notice in this case that I have given you, interestingly enough, the common side. Now, normally in a problem, we would be looking for the common side and then using that to find another bit of information. But here, I've given you the common side. So the question really is, well, how do I use that common bit of information here to find this piece that I don't know? And the answer is, what we're going to do in this case is we're going to look at at uh, the two different triangles that are implied here. And I'm going to draw them up here. So first of all, we're going to look at a right angle triangle where this is 30 degrees and then this is 20 degrees. Okay? And so when, when I find the distance right there, that's like finding this distance right here. So we'll call that y. So it's just this part of the triangle right here. Then I'm going to change things up a little bit. I'm going to look at the larger triangle here where this is 30 degrees. Now, this is not 28, okay? 28 degrees, the 28 degrees that I'm seeing here, if I cover this up here, the 28 degrees is not part of a right angle triangle. Okay, that's part of an obtuse triangle. Okay, well, for the time being, my, my trig rules, my trig functions here don't apply to obtuse triangles, not yet. So what I gotta do here is, is take a look at this larger right angle triangle and now, this angle here is this whole angle. Well, I've got a part of it at 20 degrees and a part at 28. Well, that whole angle there, that's going to be 48 degrees. And the bit of information I want is a portion of this side. Well, I, based on this information, I can't just find a portion of that side. So I'm going to have to find the full side here, which is going to be this whole distance all across there. We'll call that Z. But x, notice that x is going to be the z, the entire distance across there, minus y. Hmm, okay, so as long as I get those two pieces, I'm good. So let's take a quick look here. How are we going to get the, the y here? So there's my reference angle, the 20 degrees. Notice that the y is opposite the 20 degrees. And the 30, I wrote 30 degrees in both cases. I can't believe that. I wrote 30 degrees. Nobody said anything. I meant 30 meters. Wow. It's just that 30 degrees is an awfully common uh, angle to use. And so I didn't even think twice about it, but it's 30 meters. So my opposite is y. My adjacent is 30. So over here, the tangent of 20 degrees is going to equal y over 30. 
And well, I love the fact, love the fact that the 30 is in the denominator because when to, for me to solve for y, I just multiply up. So 30 multiplied by the tangent of 20 degrees is y. Okay. Now, I can do that on my calculator right now and, and get an approximate value. But you know what? I'm, I'm kind of lazy. And I already know what I have to do. So you know what? I'm going to get that number later when I actually really need it. Because right now, I've got to do some work on this triangle as well. So let's take a quick look here. Here's my reference angle, 48. I'm looking for the side opposite. And I gave you the side adjacent. Well, once again, that's tangent. So the tangent of 48 degrees will equal z over 30. Once again, love the fact that 30 is in the denominator. So 30 multiplied by the tangent of 48 degrees is going to equal z. So now, with those pieces right there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to this little expression. And I'm going to put z right here. So z is 30 multiplied by the tangent of 48 degrees minus my y, which is 30 multiplied by the tangent of 20 degrees. And now I need to get an answer. So now I'll bring my calculator over. Whoops, I want to make sure you can see everything there. So that will be 30 times the tangent of 48. Got to, whoops, close my bracket. Minus 30 multiplied by the tangent of 20. Close the brackets there, and there we go. The answer I'm looking for here to the nearest tenth is 22.4. Okay, so the questions that you're going to do are going to be structured either like this or like this. Either you're going to have to find that common bit of uh, information between the two triangles, which, by the way, is, is probably the most frequent way this gets asked. Or we'll give you that piece, okay? We'll give you that piece, but what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to find a couple pieces and put them together to get that, that bit of information that you're being asked for. So anyway, that would be a good time to go and try some of those practice exercises.